Welcome to Frequency Matters, the R for Microwave Update series. I'm Pat Hindle, and I'm here with my co-host, Eric Heim. This episode, we're going to cover our March test and measurement issue, which has a special focus section on cables and connectors. We're doing four of these special focus sections this year, and it's something that we experimented with last year. And these sections are carved out as an ebook after the magazine is published, so it gets additional distribution online. So it kind of makes a nice mini magazine for our readers focused on a specific topic and provides our advertisers with lead generation from the print magazine, which is very unique. So for March, our cover story was great. It was written by Andrew Landry of Aravant, and it covers kind of the history of noise sources and then the advancements towards terahertz frequencies. It's a well-written piece, so you should check it out. Eric, what do we have for our technical pieces? Well, thanks, Pat. Uh, and, and with the theme of the issue being test and measurement, it's fitting that we have a couple of application notes to illustrate some of the new test techniques. Uh, the first one is from Keysight, and it addresses PA testing using wideband active load pull. Uh, and as we move towards 6G, that's apparently becoming important. Uh, it gets into the techniques and implementation of that method, uh, so that's a good read. We also have Mori Microwave describing power sweep and active load pull measurements. So uh, active load pull sounds like something uh, we should definitely know more about. Uh, and Mori addresses setups and test techniques at millimeter wave and sub-terahertz frequencies. So a little different focus from that article. Yeah, and for our product features, we had an eight-channel oscilloscope with digital triggering from Rodin Schwartz, and it can detect 4.5 million acquisitions and 18 million waveforms per second across multiple channels. And we also had another high-resolution oscilloscope from Siglent, and that covers 70 megahertz to 4 gigahertz. Uh, Siglent's really expanding their portfolio, and they actually just announced a 12-bit oscilloscope in the news. Eric, what do we have for tech briefs? Well, we had several tech briefs. Uh, among the more noteworthy, we have Marvin Test Solutions introducing the Genesis Semi 5G millimeter wave semiconductor test systems. Uh, and these work up to 53 gigahertz, and they tout the configuration flexibility, test speed, uh, and measurement performance of those systems. And Berkeley Nucleonics announced a new waveform memory module for their arbitrary waveform generators that doubles memory. And uh, this allows more complex waveforms on the bench. So that's a, it's kind of an interesting development. Yeah, and for this episode, Copper Mountain's Brian Walker joined us to do a demo today. And it covers their automatic fixture text removal software. And this de-embeds to any reference plane that you choose. So let's take a look at a clip from that now. Uh, AFR stands for automatic fixture removal. Um, and I think this kind of software is uh, fairly common in the industry, but uh, uh, here at Copper Mountain Technologies, we developed uh, some very superior software, which does uh, fixture removal, de-embedding, uh, that's easy to use. And, uh, and there are a number of different uh, options on how to use it, which I'll show. Uh, so I'm going to de-embed this fixture. Uh, on the bottom here is a, is a through line. On the top is a, is, a, uh, is a line with a break in the middle. Uh, but we're just going to use the through line for now. Now, obviously, one could measure this through line with a with a VNA and um, and de-embed uh, de-embed it on one side. I mean, because if you measure the S parameters of this through line, you could then de-embed that on one side of the VNA. That's pretty common. AFR though is going to measure the S parameters of this through line and split it into two parts: an A and a B part, left side, right side. And it will de-embed the A side from the uh, port one and the B side from port two, such that uh, the uh, reference plane for our measurement is going to move to the middle of this fixture. So uh, turning to the news, more acquisition activity as Viavi announced that they're acquiring Spirit for $1.3 billion. And this really expands Viavi's capabilities in the test assurance and automation areas. We also had Iridium announce that they've entered into an agreement to acquire Satellis. And that's, they're a leader in highly secure satellite-based time and location services. So that complements and protects the GPS and GNS reliant systems, expanding their services. And we, finally, we had Fortify. They announced a strategic partnership with Varioprint, and they're a PCB manufacturer based in Switzerland. On a sad note, though, Gallium Semiconductor has closed its doors as Gas Labs has pulled its funding in the wake of John Ocampo's death, which was late last year. Eric, how about you for the news? 
Well, one thing that caught my eye, uh, ID TechX released a report on low-loss materials for 5G and 6G, and I thought that was interesting. Uh, we tend to focus on technologies and architectures and packaging and channel models, uh, but maybe we don't think enough about circuit materials. So that report uh, looks to have some good insights into how the material market will evolve. And I saw that FinWave was showcasing some of their RF Ganon silicon products at Mobile World Congress, and FinWave has their 3D GAN structure that they've been developing and refining for some time. Uh, so it's interesting to see that they're showing products now. Yeah, and for events, I just returned from Mobile World Congress Barcelona, where it's all about 5G advanced, 6G, and of course, AI. Other hot topics were non-terrestrial networks, reduced capacity 5G, Open RAN, Wi-Fi 7, private 5G networks, and of course, security too. And so there's some impressive products that I came across, so I thought I would uh, run down a bunch of those quickly. New Edge Signal Solutions, uh, they have a product that uses ADI's 8T8R Open RAN radio unit platform, and they won the top mobility prize from NTIA's 5G Challenge while simultaneously commercializing the design to production in 12 months. Chasm Advanced Materials announced that they are majorly scaling up into production. their customized transparent antennas following the successful introduction last year, which I checked out. I really like the transparent antenna technology. Ericsson had a triple band massive Milo FDD radio with 32T, 32R. So you mentioned Finway Semiconductor, and I met with them and saw their GAN on silicon technology. It's now showing power added efficiency as high as 60% and excellent AMPM performance covering 8 to 26 gigahertz. I also looked at Greener Waves version 2.0 of the reconfigurable intelligent services, and it's now lower in cost and promises a tenfold reduction in energy consumption compared to the previous version. And Rodian Schwartz and Keysight were both showing some very impressive 6G demos, and that uses AI and ML learning to optimize the radio channel and also the energy consumption. Skyworks Sky 5 Transceiver to Antenna Radio Frequency Front End that Samsung will be using for the next generation 5G modems was there. And finally, Qualcomm's GigaMimo system has 4,096 antenna elements operating at 13 gigahertz. It's the first GigaMimo antenna prototype to operate at the 13 gigahertz band and the only FR3 demo that I saw there. So a lot of impressive products there. Eric, how about you for uh, events? Microwave Journal is doing a panel on March 26th entitled, Will Flat Panel Beam Steering Arrays Meet the SATCOM Challenge? So please go to our website under the Events tab uh, and then Upcoming Webinars to register. EDICon Online Educational Days kick off on April the 24th uh, with our PCB Interconnect EMC EMI theme track. And registration is open. So please go to ediconline.com to sign up for free. And you're eligible for continuing education credits from the IEEE if you attend two or more technical sessions. Uh, and that wraps up this episode of Frequency Matters. Our sponsors are RFMW and Copper Mountain. RFMW is a technical distributor of RF and microwave products and now power management. When you start your next design, consider their multiple product lines. And Copper Mountain Technologies provides VNAs for thousands of clients around the world that include an RF measurement module and a software application that runs on an external PC laptop or tablet and connects to the me measurement hardware via USB interface. And remember, as a member of the industry, a subscription to Microwave Journal is free, so please visit our site and subscribe today if you're not already a reader. And thanks for watching. And please join us next time for another Frequency Matters.